Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's September 7th. These are your headlines. First up, we've got all the info on where the best Albi bite is right now. We're also hearing about great surf fishing out on the Outer Cape for stripers and bluefish. And some of the biggest stripers we've heard about this week have come from Boston Harbor and outside of Portland, Maine. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've just got a couple news items to send you away, and the first one is just going to be a quick rundown of what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. Just one fish hit the board this week, but it was significant. Norman Bouchard of Marston Mills, Mass, sent a sea bass in via snail mail that will net him at the very least the monthly prize for August. Norm's 4.15 pounder is the only sea bass entered so far in the 2023 and it couldn't have come at a better time. For his efforts, he will win the Tsunami Shield reel coupled with a Tsunami Armatec rod and a Dextreme fillet knife from Dexter Outdoors. Our top three remain unchanged. Bobby Cifarelli still holds first place with 24 points. Eddie Terrabile remains in second place with 18 points, and Kyle Kraus maintains his third place position with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman's subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And the second is just going to highlight the giveaway, which is ongoing. It's going to wrap up at the end of October, the last Wednesday in October. I can't remember the date right now. Sorry about that. Uh, if you don't know how this whole thing works, basically, you're just going to go fishing, take photos that show you and your fish, and you're going to send them in to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. The only important thing is that you include your name, the basic information of the catch, and that you want to be included in the contest. Uh, this time around, we're going to give away a prize pack from Yuzuri. It's going to have some leader material. It's going to have some monster shots. It's going to have a hydro twitch bait. It's going to have some 3D inshore topwater stuff. Maybe even more than that. We'll have to see what else I can get my hands on. But you get those into me, and then I just pick my favorite, and somebody wins the prize pack. So again, we're going to wrap this up. I think it's a, I think it's October 26th, and after that, we'll pick another one. Or we'll start another one, I should say. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Moving over into the report section now, uh, we're going to start things up in Maine as we have been, and man, the striper fishing up there just seems to be keep getting better. Uh, it seems to be coming to a bit of a crescendo at the moment, uh, with a lot of big fish being taken. 40 to 50 inch fish are being reported. A lot of these fish are taking chunk bait, but I guarantee you could do it on eels. Heard about some nice fish taken on swimming plugs. Uh, it's been happening day and night. They've been getting some top water action. So very, very good fishing from just north of Portland all the way through the New Hampshire uh, shoreline. Then you jump down into Massachusetts, and I know things have been great there too. I was talking to James today, and uh, he said the hardest part for him as far as shooting his video for us is just staying away because he's been fishing so hard. I've been hearing about some big bluefish outside the Merrimack River mouth. Um, just very good fishing taking place in really that whole north region right now. Uh, for a little more on that, let's toss it over to James so he can go take a nap. Well, the report has been up and down this weekend. I uh, heard a bunch of guys getting some fish a little south of us, a little north of us, up in the rocks. Uh, out on the beaches, whether you're up near Hampton or Salisbury, Plum Island, uh, it's all been pretty slow on the sand, uh, especially with these rip tides coming in. Uh, you would think that the fish would be there, uh, but the way these uh, rips have been forming and stuff like that, the bait have been sucked out, so the fish haven't been pulling in. Over north or south in the rocks though those guys that have been getting fish have been finding bait over there as well so put yourself uh together a nice little plan and figure out what you're going to do and you know work it sometimes those things pay off i uh, haven't heard any fish being over 22 23 pounds uh in the last week uh, but that doesn't mean they're not there Boat guys have been getting fish, no giants. Uh, I suspect things like that will change very shortly. 
a um, lot of needlefish fish. Uh, guys out in the surf have been hitting clams and worms, max. Uh, not a ton of fish, but they've been hitting some fish. Uh, those, that's the bait, guys. Uh, freshwater guys have been doing okay. Haven't heard too much from them. Uh, you know, this heat ramped back up, and I suspect those fish kind of slowed down a bit. Uh, as far as uh, myself, had a couple small fish over the weekend. Fish pretty hard. I'm pretty tired right now. Especially uh, when you get a little older, this gets really tough. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, but this is what we do. So get over it and get going. Uh, we'll see what these next set of tides bring. Uh, I'm looking pretty good at some of these over the next week or so before this net, next set of moon tides moves in. Um, sometimes these quarter moons can really pay off. So just pound the sand and do your thing. Oh, like I said, don't be tired out in the surf, out in the rocks. Uh, there was a report, one guy went in, uh, but was saved. He wasn't that far off the rock. So uh, my tip of the week, definitely, uh, be careful out there. Uh, don't do anything stupid. If you're alone out there and these big rips are out, stand back for sure. But anyways, Dave, have a good one. And everybody else, I hope you catch them up. Also, learn about good offshore fishing in this area. There's been some good tuna bite happening, like the north end of Stellwagen and then also out on Jeffries. And also very good shark fishing happening throughout that entire region. Coming back in closer to shore, you may remember last week we were talking about big stripers in Boston Harbor that came in on the tails of a giant school of bunker, or pogies if you prefer to call them that. And then the pogie boat came in and wiped out all the bunker and the bite ended prematurely. That sounds like bad luck, but it's a little more than that. Take a look at this video. You may remember last week that we talked about some big bass that had moved into Boston Harbor and then the pogie boat came in, sucked up all the pogies that they were eating and the bite died prematurely. Sounds like bad luck, but it's really more than that. Um, for years and years, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were off limits to commercial fishing for Menhaden inside Boston Harbor. Recently, they got the Friday back, and that has led to more of these conflicts, like what we're seeing here. You got a dozen boats uh, fishing, you know, around a school of bunker, and then here comes the pogey boat. He's just going to set his net right in between all the boats and everything. It's not safe, and it's not fair. As recreational fishermen, I think we can let our fingers do the walking. We can send some emails to the powers that be inside Mass Marine Fisheries, tell them we're not going to accept this, and hopefully we'll get the Friday back. Heading out of the Boston area down into the Plymouth area, things are starting to come together, you know, more like a fall run situation. There's been a lot of bait kind of collecting in Situate Harbor, which has resulted in some blitzing for stripers and some bluefish. There's still some big blues out on the ledges uh, off of Plymouth. The beaches themselves haven't yet seen that first run of peanut bunker, but uh, you know, it's going to be happening soon, just like it does every year. And uh, that area, if you remember, the last two years has hosted some amazing blitzes, uh, so you definitely want to keep your eyes on that area going forward. Uh, another place that's been really good for surf fishermen has been out around the east end of the canal, basically you know, a mile or two in each direction. Uh, along those beaches, surf fishermen have been doing very well. Uh, mixed sizes of stripers from 20 inches up to 30 pounds. Uh, I've heard a lot of fish being taken on needlefish in that area, so that's something that you might want to give a shot. Uh, then heading out to past Race Point, then a lot of bluefish and a lot of bass on the outer beaches. Uh, basically, the further, the closer you get to um, Race Point, the more bluefish you're going to get, and the further you head more toward like Nosset to the south. Uh, you're more likely to encounter striped bass. These fish are mixing together all over the place in there, though. There's been some topwater action. Uh, there's been some good night bites for both species. Um, so surf fishermen are really having a good time out on the sand beaches of the Cape. Uh, out around Monomoy is where a lot of the boat guys are going. It's a real mixed bag of fish there. Um, heard about fluke up on the shoals, even in some really shallow water. Heard about good sea bass fishing in some of the deeper spots. There have been Albies and Benito charging around, although in lesser numbers. And uh, striped bass fishing has been very good. Guys have been doing it a whole bunch of different ways, from top water to parachute jigs and everything in between. Um, just very good fishing overall in that area. 
when you get over into Nantucket Sound, that's where most people are targeting Albies and Bonito right now, and with extra emphasis on the Albies, hasn't been the best week. Um, it's been good. There's been some. There's been some instances of good bites, but it just hasn't been consistent. The better fishing has been out around Nobska, and then pushing all the way through Woods Hole into Buzzards Bay. That seems to be the hottest area. But there are a lot of boats fishing for those fish right now. Uh, it's been good striper action along the Elizabeths, and you're going to find some Albi pods in and around that as well. And then as you get up closer to the canal, um, there's been, it's, it's another area where it's been kind of like fall-like fishing. There's been some bluefish up to like 10 pounds, 5 to 10 pound bluefish. There's been stripers from 5 to 15 pounds in the same area. A lot of topwater action, just a lot of bait and a lot of, a lot of stuff to see, a lot of fish to catch. Uh, still some fluke in that area as well. Getting up into the canal, tons of bait in the canal and tons of that same class of stripers with some really big bluefish mixing in. Uh, for a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi Dave, it's another nice day here in the Cape Cod Canal. Got a west tide behind me, which gets most of my attention at this time of year because you never know when the migration is gonna start. Could be any day, could be any minute. Uh, so there's a mix of bluefish and striped bass in the canal right now. Blues up to 12 to 15 pounds sometimes, and uh, stripe is mostly 29 to 32 inches, with some up to 35 inches, which uh, actually bodes well for next year too. Um, so they're they're keyed in keyed in on uh, small bait, like peanut bunker, butterfish, whiting, uh, squid, and uh, so it's it's it, fishing's been decent on and off, and um, on the, the day of the super moon. The morning of Supermoon, uh, the boys of summer were out, of course, and uh, Hollywood Petraka and uh, Bill and the Girl Prados each caught about 20 stripers, and uh, Paulie the painter Gravina was out earlier. He was fishing the night shift, and he did well as also. Um, the uh, high hook for that day was Bill and the Girl with a 35-inch with a Mystic Spellbinder glide bait, and um, Mashpee Mike Larea was jigging fish off the bottom, uh, some... Uh, uh, slot fish and slot plus and uh, he actually uh, had a uh, well the biggest fish he had was 33 inches but he actually had one of his fish stolen by a, by a seal that followed the fish up close and then just ripped it right off of Mike's line. Um, Ed Parolin and uh, Tom uh, uh, Lipinski both got into a uh, topwater bite toward the east end and they were both using pencils and uh, and they both caught the uh, uh, slot plus fish. Um, Jim Belcher, who uh, is an experienced canal rat, caught uh, four uh, stripers and um, and some of them were above slot and uh, also uh, two bluefish. One of the blues is 34 inches. So that's a nice fish. Congratulations to Jim. And um, a guy I see almost every day, Scott Yule. He's a great canal rat. He, uh, he was picking off uh, slot plus fish off the bottom with a green mac uh, uh, fish lab and uh, and his biggest uh, striper that day was 34 inches so uh, things could be good and uh, some some days are better than others and uh, uh, we just like to welcome back uh, prior to Roslindale uh, Bill Walsh who drives here every almost every day and fishes He's a great canal rack great fisherman he was having problems with his eyes so he uh, went to uh, the doctor and they found out he's got cataracts. So he had to have a cataract operation to have them removed. And he's all set now, he can see fine. But he told me that before he had the operation, he was adding new meaning to the term blind cast. So welcome back, Bill, it's good to see you. So my, my tip of the week is that, you know, when you take a, a plug out of your surf bag, be careful because you, you probably have with a with a pencil you probably have a, a belly trouble and and you probably have a, a tail hook that's a single hook with a bucktail well when i when i put my lure into the bag i hang that single hook on the edge of the tube and so when i'm taking it out you should do it slowly because sometimes that uh treble hook can hook on and catch on to another lure or onto the side of the uh, tube and your hands moving fast and all of a sudden it stops the upward movement when it catches and now you got a single hook uh, tail hook in your finger so take it out slow until you clear your bag and until next week catch a big one
And then heading out to the western part of the, of the Massachusetts range here, uh, talking to Jason Colby, he said he did a Cox's Ledge trip on Tuesday of this week, and he said it was incredible. They caught lots of codfish. They had codfish as big as 30 pounds. Uh, they saw some albies. They had tog. Uh, he said the inshore tog fishing has been lights out. It's been as, as good as it can get. Um, and still very good scup fishing inside the river, and there's still lots of striped bass up inside the river as well. So basically, if you're fishing that area, you can pretty much pick any species of target you want, and you're probably going to be successful. Moving over into Rhode Island, it's been a little bit of a lumpy week as far as the seas go. We had Hurricane Franklin, which just battered our shores with big, uh, with big waves, but obviously it was a beautiful sunny day like today. Just, you know, it was a day for the surfers and not for the fishermen. Uh, the result of that was lumpy seas offshore and dirty water inshore, which kind of mixed up a lot of things, including the burgeoning algae fishery, which is now, you know, it's, it's coming back together now, but, you know, it's, they're in different places. The guys that did get offshore this week still doing very well, uh, keeping their mouth shut about exactly where all this is going down, but Tuna Ridge and the Gully are always good at this time of the year, and I would have to guess that, you know, a good score of those fish are being taken out there. Coming back in closer to shore, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys, welcome back to a, another quick report for uh, basically a lot of Maho Bay. I stayed in Maho Bay a bunch this week. Uh, I had one outing in the Barrington River, and uh, it was an early morning trip right at sunrise. And I did well with uh, schoolie stripers on uh, top water. Um, I had no tide right at sunrise, so it was a little slow, but I managed to pluck out a couple of nice schoolies up to 25 inches, nothing bigger than that. Uh, so a lot of swirling going on, just couldn't connect with the fish. Um, good things are happening as you get further up into the bay, outside of uh, Bristol Harbor, into Mount Hope Bay, under the Mount Hope Bridge. Uh, all the way up to the Taunton River. Um, I had an outing on Monday. Uh, we get out there and there was birds everywhere, but we really didn't see any fish working on them. A lot of them were just floating around. We could see a lot of fish, real, real small, tiny fish bubbling up in the water. Uh, we couldn't mock any bigger fish underneath them. And that had to have been all the way from the Lees River, all the way to the mouth of the Kikamute River. Uh, birds everywhere, just no fish on them at the time when I was out there. Uh, so we went a little further towards uh, Prudence Island, and uh, I, I gotta say, uh, we got on a couple of schools of albies. There were some albies at the Hog Island Lighthouse. Uh, I saw maybe three or four different schools come up, uh, chasing bait. We, uh, you know, we were running gun to get them, and uh, we could not catch up with them uh, as fast as they were up, as fast as they were down. Um, so, uh, I mean, we took about 100 casts at them and uh, we didn't get any, but uh, that's okay. Uh, we uh, took that day and uh, made it into a ground fishing trip. So, uh, <clears throat> I fished in couple, some, some of the couple of uh, spots that I have underneath the Mount Hope Bridge. Um, and I just happened to be jigging a uh, Williamson spoon uh, off the bottom looking for some sea bass in about 60 feet of water and I hooked into a nice uh, 24 inch fluke and uh, a little further on that drift I had switched over to a, uh, a 5 inch gulp paddle tail on a 1 ounce and uh, I hooked into a, uh, a beautiful 31 inch squatig. Uh so uh, I mean that made the day all in all so uh, we still know that there's some good fluke out there we caught a ton of porgies real good sized porgies um, now is the time to get those big giants early and later in the season. Um, there's a couple guys that were tatogging underneath the uh, a bridge also, and they were doing well. They had a couple keepers in the boat. So uh, tatog is starting to show up, but you do have to get through those porgies if you're crab fishing to get to those tatog because they're going to beat the tatog to that. Um, I almost kind of just let my jig sit down there a little bit longer and let the scup kind of peck away at it a little bit and then you get that big, big tog bite. So uh, tog's heating up also inside the bay. Lots of species right now. Um, if you're out there and you're fishing, uh, just you gotta have a little patience with the birds. Um, so uh, 
that's all we got for this week and uh, ho hopefully we'll have some better reports uh, on some Albies inside of the bay. Um, so uh, we'll talk to you next week. Tight lines. Now those big waves from Hurricane Franklin, they mess things up pretty good. Uh, we had a lot of Albies off of Aquidneck Island. We had them moving up into the Sconnet River. We had them off of Beaver Tail. The water went completely brown and uh, those fish mostly dispersed. In the wake of all that, uh, things have cleaned up now and the Albie bite is starting to come back together. So far what I've been hearing on the eastern half of the state is that they're in smaller pods and they're just harder to nail down overall. Um, the further west you go though, and we'll get into that more as we get further into the round report, the better off you're going to be. Uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the Aquidneck Island area, let's toss it over now to Coral Aiello from Sarah Star Charters. Hi Dave, Coral here from Sarah Star Charters with the Rhode Island Fishing Report. Um, we are officially approaching the fall run. Uh, this is a very exciting time of year for fishermen. Uh, we pretty much look forward to it. A lot of blitzes, lots of bait. Um, there's bay anchovies around, there's peanut bunker. And with that, it brings a lot of um, schoolies back and bluefish blitzing on the surface. Um, it's a time of year where you can go out fishing and it's kind of quiet and then all of a sudden a blitz will you know, show up and it will last for like, a, like an hour. Uh, some of these blitzes can be really long and it can be um, a really good time for people uh, to kind of get in on the action. It's hard to miss sometimes, uh, especially out of Newport. I know that personally I've seen blitzes last almost all day this time of year, which is pretty exciting. Um, and in those blitzes, you never know what, what you can get. Sometimes um, there's a mix of fish, um, you know, schoolies, bluefish, and albies. Um, you know, sometimes um, you can just get into a straight Albi blitz like today. Nobody was on it. It was off of Newport and it lasted pretty much all day. I mean, it was so good that I was just blind casting and hooking up. So um, although it's been kind of spotty uh, for Albies in Rhode Island, um, they are catching them and there have been reports um, off Sakonet Point, uh, West Wall, um, and Newport around um, like Rough Point area um, off of Ocean Drive. So you can get into them. Again, it's kind of spotty, but um, you know, you just have to put the time in and like hope you're pretty much at the right place at the right time and they might show up. Um, the big bass are still sitting um, in their normal spots. Um, they have been a little finicky the last few days. I'm not sure if it's because the water temperatures have gone up because of this heat wave. Um, but you can um, get them and they are being productive on eels if the tide is right. Um, other than that, the sea bass bite has still been pretty consistent and that will be consistent all the way up uh, until October. Um, the tog are starting to bite, but the water's still a little bit warm. They're a little lazy and they're not chewing um, like they will be in the next few weeks. Um, the tuna bite, of course, is here and happening. Um, so there's a lot going on and a lot to look forward to uh, for the fall run. Heading out to Block Island, we don't have the Albies out there like we did before. At least that's not what I'm hearing. Uh, however, striped bass action out there has continued to kind of reach a second peak. A lot of big fish being caught out on the ledge, a lot of big fish being caught up even in like 20 feet of water around the island. You just got to find structure, find marks, and throw your eels or your GT eels or whatever you want down there. And uh, odds are you're going to find some fish. For a little bit more on that and what's happening around Block Island and up toward Point Judith, let's throw it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Um, had a bunch of trips this week. The, uh, the inshore trips, my four hour trips, that's definitely winding down. The fishing up close to the beach for sea bass and fluke is definitely kind of on the way out. I am finding fishing deeper. But I guess the coolest thing that's happened this week is I was coming back from Cox's Ledge and uh, I saw something on the water, it looked like a boat that was flipped over. And as I got closer, I realized it was a humpback whale. And um, so I slowed down. I was kind of hoping I was going to see kind of Megalodon eating this thing. Um, and as we got closer, there was definitely sharks feeding on it. So I rigged up a shark rod. And um, as we got closer, we had a real big tiger shark was munching on this whale, a big blue shark, some smaller blue sharks. And, you know, I decided instead of baiting one of these sharks and hooking it, we just sat there, it was a glass calm day, and we just sat there and watched these animals feed on this whale, and it was pretty cool. I think it made their day. Um, the day up to that point was sea bass and scup and chicken mahis. It ends with these big sharks. So that was cool. Take care. Heading west out of the Harbor of Refuge, um, still good fluking along the beaches. We've got lots of bait in the area. We've got peanut bunker. We're going to get some mullet soon. 
Uh, I have heard a couple people saying that they saw some squid in the area, and um, you know the fluking has been good. Still a lot of short fish, but it's good and getting better. Uh, the other thing that's happening in that region is this is where it seems like all these albies that got broken up by the storm have decided to converge, and it makes sense when you think about it. You got three breachways plus an integrate pond all spewing bait into the inshore waters, and that's where these fish are going to congregate. So. Um, the bite over the last couple days has been best between Charlestown and Weekapog Breachway. Um, and this, by most accounts, there's a good amount of fish in that area. So uh, that would definitely be a good place to concentrate on this weekend if you want to catch some albies. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. into Connecticut the endless bluefish bite in the race has continued for another week um, lots of bluefish being taken out of the race from 8 to 15 pounds even a few bigger than that in the mix uh, these fish are biting very well on diamond jigs guys are getting them on top water at times some guys are getting them on chunk bait uh, diamond jig definitely leading the way though um, if you want to catch the stripers there are they are there um, but you're having a hard time getting through to them in the daytime Switch over to the night shift and uh, you're likely to find a lot more stripers. Also, if you head behind fishers, you're going to find some stripers over there as well, but you're also going to probably encounter some sharks. So uh, keep your, uh, I guess you got to decide whether or not you want to uh, risk that, but I think it's worth it. Uh, heading back towards shore, we also heard about some stripers heading up into the Thames this week. Didn't sound like anything of giant size, but... There was some slot fish in the mix, there was some schoolies, and there was some, you know, some of the bigger fish were like up to 37 inches. Uh, and it was really good topwater action, especially around the mouth of the river. So definitely a place you want to keep an eye on. And with all the bait that's coming out of that river right now, when the albies do make the turn into the sound, you can bet that they're going to show up uh, in that area. And it might that might be one of the first places that sees them. Uh, heading further west from there, we have heard about a lot of bass on a lot of those reefs like Bartlett's and Hatchet's and off of Black Point. Uh, mixed sizes, you know, anything from little schoolies up to fish well over 30 pounds. Um, top water action has been very good, although most of those fish have been on the smaller side. You know, the guys fishing at night, three-way eels or, you know, bouncing uh, GT eels or something like that, have been finding some bigger fish after dark. Uh, getting up closer to the Connecticut River. Things are finally starting to come together. We're starting to see more adult bunker now, which were absent for quite a while. I'm seeing lots of peanut bunker in the area, and uh, you know, it's just it's finally coming into that fall-like bite that we always expect at this time of the year. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey guys, for this week's fish report, we are post Labor Day, which is supposed to be the uh, kind of official end of summer for most people, but it uh, looks like the next few days at least are going to be some of the warmest we've had all summer long so uh, we're kind of in the the early very early stage of the fall run it's setting up to be a really great fall um, if you're good at using your your sonar you should be able to find a plethora of small bait it's on all the reefs all throughout eastern Long Island Sound um, some of the reefs have fish some don't but um, there is uh, uh, butterfish um, anchovies silver sides peanut bunker so really a uh, good amount of bait fish to, to get the fish going and i expect next week when these temperatures start to drop is when we really should start getting a lot of blitzes uh there's some rumors of some funny fish around um definitely plenty of blue fish a lot of blues around um and um still good striper fishing um the the stripers are Mostly medium to large stripers. I uh, haven't been seeing a lot of schoolies yet, but I expect that to change very soon. Uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of um, smaller to medium-sized stripers blitzing on these small uh, on this small bait that's all over the place. Um, bottom fishing's pretty good. Uh, black sea bass fishing is good. Uh, a lot of shorts, a lot of 15 inchers, but um, there are um, enough keepers out there to put a limit together. Um, so I expect things to really transition over the next week or so, um, as soon as we get through this heat wave. Good luck. 
Now we're going to head inland with Rowan Lytle and uh, hear what's going on there. Hey everybody, uh, coming to you from Vermont today. I'm up here with my friend Captain Drew Price uh, targeting all sorts of different species. Today was a uh, drum, freshwater drum. Uh, we caught quite a few, some really big ones. Uh, back down in Connecticut on the river, the flows are dropping. We don't have much rain in the forecast. Uh, we'll see if that offshore hurricane swoops in. Uh, but for the time being, really hot this week, but the pattern's gonna shift. Uh, that pattern shift could be interesting. The temperatures at night are gonna drop down again as cool as they were about a week and a half ago. Um, finesse presentations again are gonna be pretty important. But uh, those cooler temperatures will also get a lot of those young of the year herring and shad moving. And don't discount a uh, good big smallmouth bite on top water on those weed edges in the main stem of the river. Uh, the water clarity should be improving. Um, it looks like uh, all cylinders ahead uh, for our early fall, good quality uh, Connecticut River bass fishing. Uh, so get out there and get after it. Now we'll take a quick, uh, quick run out of the river. Just head a little bit west out to Westbrook. Check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Uh, some unseasonably warm weather is keeping things nice and hot, literally and fishing wise. Um, we've got lots of big bass out there biting right now. There are still plenty of uh, bird influenced blitzes, lots of peanut bunker, uh, silver sides, <clears throat> bay anchovies, things like that kicking around. Um, a lot of the summer stuff is still working. GT eels, live eels, we just got a bunch of fresh caught bunker um, into the shop. Those are definitely still working as well if you can find them. Um, top water bite is picking up. That's a traditional fall thing. Now that we're into the first week of September, uh, we can expect that top water bite to keep getting better. Uh, sea bass has also gotten better recently. Um, better reports coming in, especially if you can find a pile of fish, they seem to be uh, pretty well concentrated if you can dial them in, uh, shorten your drift and stock up. Uh, slow pitch jigs, bait rigs, things like that still working for those sea bass. Fluke has been challenging and spotty. Folks are still going for them, but it's definitely smart to have a backup plan. Um, waiting on hardtails shouldn't be much longer here, probably five to six to seven days. Who knows really when, but we're definitely crossing our fingers. Overall, this unseasonably warm weather is going to keep things really good. Some beautiful days to enjoy the weather out there on the water and uh, definitely a lot of fish to catch um, and a lot of activity to kind of check out and go chase down. So good luck and we'll see you out there. And then in the like central western half of the sound, I got two things to talk about. One, it's been really good sea bass and scup fishing on all those reefs, Six Mile and all the other ones um, from there, southwest and beyond. Uh, guys have been crushing the, the bottom fish in that area. And then the other thing is when you get out more toward Milford, the bluefish bite has been really good along the beaches. Um, seeing fish like up to 10 pounds during the day and then after dark they're getting some even bigger fish, especially on chunk bait. So uh, if you're looking for a really big bluefish, that might be a good place to try out. And then as we head further west, we're going to check in now with Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The blue fishing has been great on these big moon tides we had. The diamond jig and bite 11 B bins absolutely lights out on the outgoing. Closer to the cannon, 60 to 100 feet, I would say. I would say 47s when the tide's slower, all the way up to 87s right now because of the big tides. There's some stripers in the mick, but there's been tons of bluefish, and they're still coming in our harbors on all this peanut bunker, you know, on the high tides. They're feeding on the flats, they're going away up Nauk River, guys are catching them from Nauk Beach, you know, Sherwood Island, 28C, you know, chunking at night's been good. We've been seeing bass in the mix too, to around 30 pounds. We have tons of small baits, so, you know, this fall is shaping up to be a good one. And everybody's anticipating, you know, the arrival of the Albies local. We haven't heard anything yet, a few Spanish mackerel around, so that's cool, so you can get after that. I would say hot spots or, you know, Sherwood Island that holds a lot of bait this time of year to middle ground. And then the porgy bite's fantastic still, shallow or deep, the beaches, the pier, they've been catching them, sandworms, clams, squid. Sea bass are still concentrated on our deep water reefs. So, you know, I would definitely fish like 50 or more, or even the wrecks up to like 80 feet. You could even get to 100 if you have spot lock. The fluke fishing has been so-so. We've seen some limits this week, but it's still a grind. You know, this time of year gets tricky. You can fluke shallow or deep because all the small bait. And that's all. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Albi fever has gripped the area. And uh, if you haven't caught it yet, this weekend will be a good time to go. Uh, we do have another hurricane looming way out in the Atlantic, and it looks like it's going to at least affect us. Uh, so you may want to get it in now uh, before we get another round of big ground swell and giant waves battering the beaches. Uh, but until then, it looks like we've got fairly stable weather, 
and uh, should be good for all you Albi chasers or whatever else you might want to chase out there. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer. Uh, we cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We have fishing reports and articles that cover all the fishing that, that happens along that massive stretch of coast, including freshwater. Uh, so head over there and check that out. It's 20, $29 for the year. So the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. I say that almost every week, and I truly believe it. If you're still not interested after checking out the website, though, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.